What is up, YouTube? Dots Gaming here, and today I'm bringing you guys an update to my racial passives guide for the Elder Scrolls Online. So, in the recent Wrathstone patch, Zenimax has updated all of the racial passives for obviously the various races in the game. So, we did see a lot of changes to the races, a much better balance between the races. So, with obviously with new changes, there are going to be new recommendations for the races and the roles that they fall into. You kind of want to choose your race based on the role you want to play, not necessarily the class. Your your role, whether it be magic DPS, stamina DPS, tank or healer, is what influences what race you want to choose. So we're going to be going over my opinion on the best race role combinations for ESO. And we will be going over the racial passives first and what they actually are, followed by what I feel are those best combinations for both PvP and PvE. So moving into the racials themselves, we are going to be starting with High Elf. So the first thing that we have is their... The first passive is always kind of something that doesn't necessarily affect combat, but it's normally just like a little extra something for the race. So we have increases experience gained and destruction staff skill line by 15%, and you get an extra 1% experience gained. We also have spell charge, which grants 645 magicka or stamina based on what is lowest after activating a class ability. So if your magicka pool is the highest, you're going to be restoring stamina. If your stamina pool is the highest, you're going to be restoring magicka. This effect can occur once every six seconds, and it also reduces damage taken by 5% while you're using an ability with a cast or channel time. We also have Syrup Bane's Boon, which increases your max magicka by 2,000, and Elemental Talent, which increases your spell damage by 258. For the Argonian, our first passive gives us a Restoration Staff skill line increase by 15%, so you're an XP a little bit faster, and we get a 50% additional swimming speed. For Resourceful, this grants us increased max magicka by 1,000, and it restores 4,000 health, magic, and stamina whenever you drink a potion. Argonian Resistance increases your maximum health by 1,000 and your disease resistance by 2310, and you're immune to the disease status effect. And then we also have Life Mender, which is going to increase our healing done by 6%. For our first Wood Elf passive, we increase the experience gained with the Bow skill line by 15% and decreases our fall damage taken by 10%. Your Phrase Endurance is going to grant us 258 stamina recovery. Resist Affliction is going to increase our max stamina by 2,000 and our poison resistance by 2310, and we are immune to the poison status effect. And we have the Hunter's Eye passive, which increases our stealth detection radius by 3 meters. And after you roll dodge, you gain 10% movement speed for 6 seconds and a bonus to physical and spell penetration, penetration of 1,500 for that duration. For Breton, our first passive grants us an experience gain in the Light Armor skill line by 15%, as well as an extra 1% alliance points gained. We also have the Gift of Magnus, which increases our max magic gain by 2,000. Spell Attunement, which gives us 2310 spell resistance as well as 100 magic recovery. But the spell resistance portion of this passive is doubled if you're afflicted with either Burning, Chilled, or Concussed. We also have Magicka Mastery, which reduces the cost of our magic skills by 7%. For the Dark Elves, we have for our first passive an increased experience gain in the dual wield skill line by 15% and reduces our damage taken from lava by 50%. We have the Dynamic passive, which increases our max stamina and magicka by 1875. We have Resist Flame, which increases our flame resistance by 2310 and makes us immune to the burning status effect. And we also have Destructive Ancestry, which increase, uh, which actually changed to Ruination in the Wrathstone update, and that increased our weapon and spell damage by 258. For the Imperials, our first passive increases our experience gained in the one-handed shield skill line by 15% and grants us a 1% additional gold gained. We have the Tough passive, which increases our maximum health by 2,000. We have Imperial Metal, which increases our maximum stamina by 2,000. And we have Red Diamond, which when we deal direct damage, we restore 333 health, magicka, and stamina. And this effect has a 5-second cooldown, and it also reduces the cost of all abilities by 3%. For the Khajiit, our first passive increases our experience gain in the medium armor skill line by 15%, and we get a 5% bonus ch change to successfully pickpocket somebody. 
nimble has been changed to robustness which increases our health recovery by 100 and our stamina and magic recovery by 85 we have lunar blessing which increases our maximum health magic and stamina by 825 and we have feline ambush which increases our critical hit damage and healing by 10 percent while reducing our self detection radius by three meters or excuse me reduces your self detection radius and stealth by three meters for the nord for our first passive we have the experience gain a two-handed skill line increased by 15 percent and we get 15 extra minutes on drink buffs for uh stalwart we have increased max stamina by 1500 and when you take damage you gain five ultimate and this can occur once every 10 seconds we have the resist frost passive which increases our maximum health by 1000 and your cold resistance by 2310 also making us immune to the chilled status effect finally we have the rugged passive which increases our physical and spell resistance by 3960 for orcs our first passive increases our experience gain in the heavy armor skill line by 15% and also grants us 10% inspiration gain. We have the brawny passive, which increases our maximum stamina by 2,000. We also have unflinching rage, which grants us 1,000 maximum health and heals you for up to 600 when you deal damage with a weapon with a 4 second cooldown. Finally, we have Swift Warrior, which increases our weapon damage by 258, reduces the cost of sprint by 12%, and increases your movement speed while sprinting by 10%. Finally, we have Red Guard. Our first passive gives us a increase in the one-handed shield skill line experience gain, as well as 15 extra minutes on food buffs. We have Martial Training, which reduces the cost of weapon abilities by 8%, reduces the effectiveness of snares applied to you by up to 15%. We have Conditioning, which increases your maximum stamina by 2,000. We also have Adrenaline Rush, which whenever you deal direct damage, you restore 950 stamina, and this can occur once every 5 seconds. So those are all of the new racials coming into Wrathstone, but some of you might be wondering, what is best for magic and stamina? The difference between the racial passives in the past has been much wider than it currently is. There is more flexibility for choice now than there ever has been. But I will go over which races are kind of the best for group situations, okay? So it's... So when you have a full raid buff, what you can expect. Your best race for Magicka DPS, you're looking at the following order. Altmer, Khajiit, Dunmer, and then Breton. But the difference between these is very, very small. Like, I'm talking less than 100. Between less than 100 to, like, less than 200 of a difference between some of the races like between altmer and breton we're talking less than a 200 dps difference between these two and we're talking like 61,000 dps like there's a less the difference of like less than 200 so really choose what you want any one of these four races is going to work out great for you um, it's just going to kind of determine what buff food you use at the end of the game because Bretons have so much sustain that they can afford to use blue food while Altmer, Khajiit, and Dunmer are going to want to use uh, recovery food. But those are going to be your four best magic races for PvE DPS. If we're talking PvP DPS, we're also going to chuck Argonian into that mix. Argonians are great for PvP due to the potion passive sustain. Uh, and just the healing done as well also really helps survivability. So those are going to be your five races for PvP. But then, like I said, for PvE, you're looking at Altmer, Khajiit, Dunmer, and Breton. In terms of our stamina, we are looking at Orc, Dunmer, Khajiit, Bosmer, and Redguard. This is going to be the order of our DPS. But again, the difference between these, a little bit wider than Magicka. Uh, I think we have a difference of a little less then 2000 we're looking at like maybe like a 1500 damage difference between orc and red guard so again very very small so really between orc dunmer khajiit bosmer and red guard you really choose what you want uh orc will be the best i think uh but really any one of those options will be perfectly fine and then in terms of pvp also feel free to chuck nord and imperial into that list because imperial and nord offer really good passives for pvp as well and the good thing about pvp racial choices is patch for both magicka and stamina and healing is that it's a really personal choice. There isn't necessarily, I think, one race that's necessarily better than the others in all situations. It very much depends on your build and how you would like to create your character. So that is an awesome thing that Zoss has done and achieved with their racial passives this patch. In terms of tanking, we are looking at Nord, Argonian, and Imperial. Argonian is going to be the easiest to sustain with. Nord is going to give you the easiest time to hit resistance cap. 
and Imperial is kind of like a little is a bit bit better stats than than you know than Argonian and offers a little bit of sustain. So it's kind of like that mid ground between Argonian and Nord. So really, again, choose what you like. It's going to really depend on how you want to build your tank to determine which is better. Um, and tanks, you know, for PvP. Again, same races if you want to play a tank in PvP. In terms of healing, we are going to be looking at Breton, Argonian. And I'm going to also give a mention and a shout out to Khajiit. I think Khajiit now with the 10% critical healing also will make solid healers. Um, Bretons offer amazing sustain, but again, Argonians also bring great sustain through that potion passives too. And Khajiit now bring the big heals via their crit heal damage. And then they also bring some magic recovery as well. So really between any one of those three, I think it kind of depends on what you want for your healer. But any one of those three races is going to do perfectly fine. Breton and Argonian would be the easiest to sustain on though. So if you do have a little bit of trouble with sustaining um, or want to have the safest amount of sustain, one of those two races will be best. And then again, the same recommendations for PvP as well. But that's pretty much it for me, guys. Again, the thing that I love about the racial passives for this patch is that there is way more personal choice than there has ever been. Way more personal choice. Race used to play a much more influential role on your overall DPS. Like the difference between races would be a couple thousand, but we really don't have that anymore. We're looking at like for the stamina, a difference of maybe one and a half K. And for Magicka, we're talking like a couple hundred so really choose what you want play what will you will enjoy the most because ultimately that's what's going to have give you the most fun and the most enjoyment out of your character but that is it for me today guys video is pretty much done if you like this video if you like my uh my covering of the racial passives as well as the recommendations i have i'd appreciate if you smack the like on the video any questions or comments feel free to leave a comment below and for more great elder scrolls online content please hit that sub button as well as make sure to hit the bell to keep notifications on so i want to thank you all so much for stopping by today i very very much appreciate it as always i'm dots gaming and i'll see you all in the next one